I mean, it's fine. I'm just, all I'm saying is that you'd think by now that engineers would come up. If we're coming up with a microchip to implant everybody, we can't come up with a mic small enough to like put in an earring or something. Oh, were you going to, I was, I was hoping for a response. That would have been nice. I've just scratched the surface on reviewing the footage that I had from Tony's interview. I might have procrastinated a little bit on reviewing it only because I think that was like the first time that I wasn't totally on top of my game as far as my research goes. And I felt a little bit embarrassed because I, I thought that Project Regeneration Volume 1 was his vocals but re-recorded. I didn't realize that it was his actual <clears throat> original vocals, which is crazy. And I'm so grateful that Tony came and blessed this couch with his presence I've known Tony for so long. He's, Tony's just such a good dude. And I've known him for over 15 years now. And I also didn't know that they were on their own record label, which is huge and awesome and everything I want for this podcast. So I'm glad he talked about that as well. But like, <clears throat> I don't know. It's just crazy that we've come full circle on this podcast and that, I was able to now I caught him right right in between tours. Like I texted him around Christmas time and I think he was coming back from being on tour in Europe with Fear Factory and I was like I've got a limited window. If my audio mixer's not working, it's not working, but he will be here. <clears throat> I sent him a bottle of tequila that I I low key kind of want now. But I already know that his interview is going to be good. It was already good. It was such a cool experience. And to have him kind of, like, I've heard Tony talk about these things before, and we've had these conversations plenty of times. But oddly enough, I think that's the most vulnerable that I've seen Tony. He's not a, a, a big, so I mean, he's a big softy. He's just not open with his emotions like that a whole lot. And so... It was kind of cool to have that moment with him. And that's kind of what I wanted for this podcast was, you know, I have so many kinds of conversations with people. And I mean, that's the stuff that lights me up is just connecting with other people and hearing people's experiences and taking home lessons from what other people have gone through. And I lost my thought I hate when that happens man it was a good thought it was a really good thought Fuck, man it's not relevant I wanted to just recap so if I if I I was also that for loco man took me out for two days I don't know that I can I took some uh I took some video of myself eating special k red berries in the middle of the night because I was so messed up from the Four Loco. I actually came back in here, turned my cameras on, said something stupid, but I didn't realize I wasn't recording the audio and I turned it off. Maybe that'll be Patreon content. My drunken rants and antics and the Four Loco after, after Four Loco Diaries. <laughs> I, oi, I don't know if I can keep doing that with podcast guests anymore. It's fun though, but man, it f***s me up. I have to wipe my whole day clean. I can't just like go off about my day after that. So, but Tony was a good sport. I looked like the alcoholic. I always look like the crazy one. How is this possible? Tony and I have had, and I did not, I did not realize this. How many like random moments that I've had with Tony where it's been like the middle of the night and we've gone to get tacos somewhere. And like I, I specifically remember there was a time I was like not okay to drive home. And mama's 
And Tony waited with me and we ended up at a strip club. He was like, well, let's go down, down the street to the strip club and like, you can sober up there. And um, yeah, Tony's always just been such a good time. And I know I'm going to be, I'm going to run into him. Nam is this weekend, which I've forgotten about. And I haven't been in like six years, seven years. It's been a long time and I heard a lot has changed, but I'm hoping to reconnect with a lot of people that I once knew and have known. And since they're in the area, I can probably get a couple on this podcast. I might just take my camera and start interviewing people. We'll see what they let me do. All that to say, the Four loco from the second I started drinking it, everything that I had prepared went right out the window. It, like my body and face gets hot when I drink it. I don't know what they put in there. It's not... I, I left to walk Tony out and I walked back and my entire body was like erupted in chills. And I was like, what is this? Like, I don't, I, I just don't, I don't know what they put in that stuff. I don't know. But if you're like on a budget and you need something and you're feeling it or having a rough day, rough week, fucking drink one of those. Perspective is everything. <laughs> But I did want to ask Tony what if he had any embarrassing moments because I wanted to segue into this question that I had posted on my story about and you all said to share the story. And like 30% of you told me to not seriously embarrass myself. A lot of you told me not to share this embarrassing story. It is an audition story. And I wanted to tell him this because... I think he knows this band. And so if I was going to do it, I could do it in the presence of somebody who made me feel comfortable about this story because I've literally never shared this story with anybody. I've maybe told, I told three people when it happened. And I might as well just tell it. I had an audition. It was for a Deftones music video. The music video was, I forget the name of the song, it's a great music video. They were looking for all kinds of street dancers because they were trying to do this kind of skate, b-boy, slow-mo shots along with one of their songs or whatever. So th I went to this audition. I had an agent call me and said, I marketed you as a crump dancer. You're going to this audition. Which crump was like in my arsenal of special skills but not something I would ever put myself out to be but I went to this audition and there were a bunch of people there their sign up protocol was very weird but like you had to sign in before you get I'm trying to figure out if all this extraneous information is even necessary and I don't think most of it is so I get to this audition which is in like this courtyard of a hotel that they were hosting. There were hundreds of dancers there. And I go, I sign in, and uh, Mother Nature decides, I'm gonna kill my cats. I'm gonna fucking kill them all. Somebody's gonna clip this 10 years from now and be like, look at how abusive she was to her cats without any fucking context of what they mentally put me through. Papa's kept shutting the door at one in the morning last night. I have to put boots in front of all of my doors that I don't want shut. So he can't just lock his sisters in other rooms and then just bail and then just start crying and screaming. And I fucking forgot my thought. So I signed in and Aunt Flo came to town. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding? Oh, you locked. You guys are out of your minds. This one in dresses. The other one locked in the bathroom. <sighs> We're not going to get any sponsors if you keep fucking acting like this. I signed in. Aunt Flo came to town. I was wearing these like 
Dickie cut off shorts. And so I ran to the bathroom. I was not wearing underwear, which is a lesson I learned long, long, long time ago. <laughs> and I went to the bathroom and I grabbed a bunch of toilet paper because I had already signed in and I was next to be called up with the other group of dancers. And so I ran to the bathroom really quick and I grabbed a bunch of toilet paper and I just kind of like shoved it up there, like crumpled it up and just shoved it up there. And I was in the nick of time, ready to go. They called my name. I went in with these other group of dancers. The Deftones were there, by the way. And they were sitting at the front. Uh, they were all sitting at this big table. And the dancers that were called out, by the way, all the other dancers that they had already called and had their audition had to wait and watch everybody else's audition. Mind you, I was like group number 20. There were at least 150 people in that room. Oh, man, this is breaking my soul to even talk about. Fuck. And our auditions were freestyling. Everybody had to get up one by one and dance in front of the Deftones, the casting directors, the choreographers, and all of the other dancers that have already auditioned. And I get out. I do what I do best. This I've been in thousands of auditions. This is nothing new. Um, I felt the crumpled up toilet paper start to move. And I kept dancing like nothing was happening. And I felt immediately lighter. And I look down. And I look down and I see the tissue paper. I, this is how dis dissociated I was at that. I don't remember if there was anything on the toilet paper. I didn't, I don't even remember what it looked like. It could have been nothing. I, who the fuck knows, but all I remember is looking down and then looking up, looking at them, look at me, look at that thing and look it up. Like, and then me looking at them. I, when I tell you I fucking froze like 250 dancers. I know I said like 150, but there, there had to, I'm pretty sure there were over 200 people in that room in an open floor. Like you're, think your worst fucking nightmare as a female that takes a cake for me. I froze and I left and I left the tissue there and I ran out so fucking fast and I never looked back. I called my mom she was stunned. I called my sister looking for some reprieve, some like some sort of something that'll make me feel better. A story that they've gone through. I don't fucking know. No one said anything, which just confirmed how traumatic that experience was. And both of them were like, wait, so you left the tissue paper there. And I was like, what did you want me to fucking do? Fight or flight? kicked in and my body chose fucking flight. I booked it so fast. And what's funny is I never told this story because I never wanted to get out which audition it was because of the Deftones ever, ever find out that it was me. Like now, then they're going to know me as the fucking bloody tissue girl. And I apologize to anybody who had to like go and get it. Oh my God, I can't. Like I can't, I, I don't. That's like my shower moment. When I'm in the shower and you think of like something you did that makes you just cringe and die inside. That every time somebody asked the question, I was like, I'm never going to fucking share this story. And I may never post this video, but I, it was stuff like that though, that made me stop pursuing shit like I kept getting these not just failures because I fail all the time I fail more auditions than I've ever booked in my life and that's totally okay it's part of the business you know but I had embarrassing shit happen to me and I was just like is this even worth it anymore <laughs> like the public humiliation of getting your period in an audition in front of a bunch if it was like if I auditioned for Janet Jackson and that happened, I would be totally fine. I know I'd be fine. But to do it with like a bunch of B-boys and the Deftone, I cannot listen to a Deftone song. Anytime the Deftones is on at a bar, at a concert, they play anywhere. I, I just, it's not even, it's not even about liking them at this point. It's just, it reminds me of a very embarrassing time. And I, um... 
I'd like to say I learned a lesson from that. You know, I think the lesson I learned from that experience is to, if I did, knowing that, go through that, knowing what I know now, I would have just acknowledged it, acknowledged the awkward in the room, been like, oh, fuck. Sorry, guys. Gotta go. And then grabbed it and left. I mean, I guess that would have been pretty badass if I picked it up and continued dancing. But, like, at that point, I was not... I think I think I was 18. Like I was just starting to go on auditions by myself. And I was like, I need my mom. This is not okay. And I just died. I died the entire drive home. I was like, I can't believe I left it there. I can't believe I left it there. Plenty of moments like that, though. I'm excited. We I keep getting guests that were just kind of unexpected and unintended, and I'm actually really excited about it. I didn't know where this podcast was going to go. I was actually kind of worried that I was going to run out of content really fast or that people weren't going to want to come talk to me and come chat, and I, I've gotten a lot of no's, but I'm getting more and more yeses now, and I'm getting people reaching out, which is kind of cool. I don't have to ask as much. But it's awesome. I'm kind of excited to see where where this is going to go. And I don't, I mean, I don't know why this feels right, but it feels right. And everything, mic and audio issues aside, like has just been kind of going, I don't want to say easy because like I've put a lot of fucking work and effort into this, but the backside of the preparedness on, I've, I've spent about, I think now it's six, seven months working on this podcast only to be starting to post, film and post stuff two months ago. So yeah, I put a lot of time in and maybe this is just now the feeling of like all that hard work kind of now paying off. But it's exciting. I'm excited to see where it goes. I hope you have a great day. Send me comments, suggestions, questions, life advice. If you know anybody that has a great story and wants to be on the pod, send it to the email. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a fucking titty. And I'll catch you guys later.